Hey guys, uh, welcome. Hope you're all doing well. Um, today we're going to start reviewing uh, business statistics stuff you should already have covered, but uh, might be a little rusty. So let's see what we can what we can do for you. The first thing we're going to talk about oh is what we're interested in. So in econ we're, or in econ in statistics, what we're really interested in is, uh, is populations, right? So we want to know about the world. Uh, we want to know how it works, and so what we're really interested in is populations. Uh, what is a population? Well, it's a collection of any any set of objects, really, that are all the same type. Um, usually, populations are big, and so we don't often see populations, but that's what we really care about, because that's the real world, the big world, everything that really goes on. What we have to work with, though, are samples, and so we, we work with populations and samples. Uh, in particular, we usually work with samples, which are relatively small. And we work with samples because we want to know something about the population. So uh, we infer things about the population. Uh, one thing we might want to know about the population is its size. Uh, <coughs> when I say big, how big? The, same, the population size is given by the big letter N. And so that's the first statistic that we use. Population size is big N. And the sample size. Well, because samples are small, instead of a big N, we're going to use a little n. And that's where we start. So that's the first, the simplest statistic. In practice, it can be really hard to find the size of the population, right? We have a whole Census Bureau devoted, in part, to finding out how many people there are in the U.S., and it doesn't always work so well. Um, and there are some statisticians who argue, and I think rightly probably, that you'd better off looking at very carefully at a sample and then using that to get to the actual size of the population, then you are actually trying to estimate the size of the population. In any case, one thing we might be interested in is the size. But another thing we might be interested in is another characteristic. Uh, for most of the time, we're going to be talking about quantitative characteristics, but there are characteristics of the population that we might care about. What, what might we care about? We might care about height. Right? We might care about... Um, whatever, error, you know, mean, filling weight, if, if you're loading sacks of grain, you might care about the filling weight population, you might care about IQ, if we're talking about farmers from Dubuque, you might care about their average return on their investments, the likelihood they might buy your product, uh, if you like playing craps, you might care about pairs of rolled dice, there's lots of things you might care about, for now mostly we're going to worry about numerical measurements, um, now, we want to use math to try to analyze this stuff, so what we'll do usually is we'll, we'll give a name to this characteristic. Like we'll say, let x equal height. Right. We work with x's, but we really care about heights, so we pick a variable and we name the variable that thing. Okay, <coughs> now let's say, for example, what we want to know is for a group, what's the average height? Well, one way to find this is just to add them all up and divide by however many they are, right? That's the easy way or whatever. That's the intuitive way that you learn in elementary school. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to look at the anatomy of a formula. So, if we want to know the mean <coughs> pardon me, the cough. <coughs> uh, the mean value of x within a sample. That's called the sample mean. So, Usually we denote. Oh, pardon me. Usually we denote that sample mean with a little x with a line on top of it. X bar. Okay. So we want to know the mean sample. We might want to know the mean height of a sample. <coughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to use this. We want to find x bar. So how do we find x bar? Well, the way we do that is, hold on, I'm going to move. I have a little keyboard thing that I want to move out of my way because it's annoying me. Okay, I'm back. There's a formula for sample mean, which is, which I will draw for you right down here. It's going to be on your formula sheet. It tells you everything you need to do to find the sample mean. Um, but if you can't read it, it's not much use. So I'll write it out for you, and I'll read it while I write it. It's x bar equals the sum from i equals 1 to n of x sub i, all that divided by n. So that's x bar. So <clears throat> what, do, what do we know here? Some of this is confusing. Other parts, not so much. 
So x bar is just a, it's going to be our sample mean. That's what we're trying to find. Divided by n. Okay, divided by n. We know that we understand divided by n. Divided by n means we'll divide by the the sample size because n is the sample size. So let's take a look at x sub i next. So x sub i, that's the, x remembers height. x sub i is a specific height. So i is going to be an index. You can think of this like an id number. Uh, I often describe it as deli, deli tickets. And that means that, and, and that's an index for individual i. That's the way we put it. So i indexes individuals. <clears throat> individuals within the sample within the population. So in this case, since we're talking about heights, it's probably people, although I guess we could talk about heights of uh, prize cows or something. Um, but in any case, I indexes individuals. And the way that this works is that we give everybody a deli ticket. So everybody has a, a number. And then when we want to know what X sub 2 is, well, X2 is person 2's height. X27 is the, tw per the, you call up 27, whoever's holding number 27 comes up, you measure their height. We said X is going to be the height, so now X sub I is the height for person I. Now, we not only do we have heights, but we have them attached to individuals, and that's what that X sub I allows us to do. Now we can call, now we can call up anybody's height by calling their number, by calling up their X I. Okay, now last but not least, we have this thing right here. Okay, this is called a summation symbol. So this right here, this is a big sigma, it's a Greek letter, and it's a summation symbol, and what and it tells us what to do. In particular, it, we read this as the sum from i equals 1 to n. What this means is we're going to start, we're going to start at the bottom, it's got a superscript and a subscript. This is the superscript and this is the subscript. So let me rewrite their formula. <sighs> What we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom. We're going to start with i equals one. We're going to, and when we we're going to go through each one in order, and for each one we're going to call the number. We're going to bring them up, <coughs> and we're going to go do that over and over again. Bring them up, measure their height. Bring them up, measure their height until we finish with the nth person. And this sigma tells us that we should add them up. That's what sig big sigma means. There are other symbols that you can use like this that have a subscript and a superscript. There's a product symbol where it says multiply them up. That's a big pi. There's a union symbol where it means gather them together. But this summation symbol says whatever whatever happens over here, right over here, this section right here, all this stuff, whatever that is, do that and then add it up. So if we want to find height, <coughs> if we want to find the average height, we need to add them up and then divide. Okay, so. <laughs> That's the summation symbol. That's how x bar equals the sum from i equals 1 to n of uh, of these heights. Okay, we can do an example. Let's see how much time I have here on my clicker. Uh, it's been 9-ish, uh, eight, 8 minutes. Uh, so we have we have time to do one. Let me see if I can pull up. Uh, I'm going to create a new Excel file. Uh, and I'll punch in some stuff here so that you can see it. Okay, no, I don't want it to be big. There we go. So we have a new Excel spreadsheet here. <coughs> Let me minimize this one. New Excel spreadsheet, and we have five people, okay? I'm going to create a table that has their name, their height, and their names are Alex, Brandy, Carla, Devin, and Aaron. And they each have heights in inches. 66, 64. 4, 73, 60, and 57. So that's their name. That's their height. Now, if I want to take the sum, or if I want to find the average height within this group, here's my formula right here. Right? I've been messing with these, but it's the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi all over n. So what that means is we give them numbers. So I'm going to give them numbers now. There's their index or their i. You can number them in any order you want. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to number them alphabetically. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. <coughs> okay. What this means now is that x3, eh, that's, we know what that is now. Let's call up number 3 and what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 73. Okay. So that's x3. Uh, we can do all sorts of stuff. But what we want to do is find x bar. Now we have the formula over here. 
And so we can take these numbers and we can add them up. Let's call up the first one and we'll keep adding them. So right now we have x1. Okay, that's 66 measured Alex's height. Call up number two. Okay, Brandy's 64 inches, so we add 64. Add these together, you get 130. Call up the next person. Number three, Carla will step up and we'll get another 73 inches up of height. Add that get to 203. Give myself a little more room down here. Call up number four. Get 60 inches, get up to 263. And if you add number five, 57, we'll get up to 320. So that's the sum from i equals one to n of x sub i. That's how we start. Now if we wanna take, find the average, well, scroll down a little bit further, we'll get x bar equals, it's gonna be 320 divided by n. How many people are there? One, two, three, four, five people. So 320 divided by five should give us our average height. And sure enough, if you do that, you get 64. <coughs> okay, so the mean height of this sample is 64 inches. So that's how we find a mean. And that's uh, you know, that's a, just a brief introduction to uh, the anatomy of a formula. There are other means. That's the sample mean. We can also do the uh, population mean. In practice, we're not going to calculate the population mean all that often. This is kind of tricky to calculate because you have to count everybody. But we do have a symbol for population mean. Mu is the population mean. And it's pretty sim similar. The form formula looks like this. It's the sum from i equals 1 to big N of x sub i all divided by big N. Uh, you have to count, you have to measure everybody's height to do that, but that's fine. Okay, other the two other averages we care about are median. Median is the middle one, so if you sort the list uh, in order, in increasing or decreasing order, the middle one, so in this case it would be Carla. Uh, that's terrible, I was using my mouse. So Carla, uh, no it wouldn't be Carla, what am I saying? They're not sorted. <laughs> I take that back. We could sort them first, or we could just go. So shortest is Aaron, next shortest is Devin, and then Brandy's in the middle. So Brandy is the median. In addition, we also have the mode, which is the most commonly occurring. Those are going to be way less important than the mean for our purposes. So we're going to care a lot more about the mean. All right, looks like I'm running out of time. Uh, so that's just the first, that's the, the beginning of descriptive statistics. We'll look uh, at variance next and show how to work through that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll move right on. Thanks.